Hello everybody, uh, Bose here. Uh, as you can see, this is not an edited gameplay, but this is another tips and tricks video. This is one that I've been getting uh, a little bit here through comments sprinkled here and there, and it's mostly just from comments of, of saying, how am I doing X, Y, and Z while I'm playing? And I figured, you know, I might as well just make a video about it because I keep getting these questions asked all the time. There's no, there aren't enough videos like this on YouTube. Uh, here you go. If you guys don't know who I am, I'm Bose. I stream Civilization VI on Deity every Wednesday through Saturday, 12 to 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on twitch.tv slash Bosteus, and I upload edited gameplay of my uh my games from youtube or from twitch onto youtube so uh with that being said uh these are some tips and tricks if you watch content creators you know such as myself potato mcwhiskey the game mechanic saxy then you you may recognize these and be like oh, okay well everybody should know these but a lot of people don't know these things and i get questions about it all of the time in my stream so uh without further ado here are some tips and tricks uh to to add to your repertoire of playing civilization 6. All right, so the first one I'm going to talk about here is something that you've probably seen before. Uh, Potatoes talked about it. Potato actually literally has a video on uh, the same type of thing that I'm talking about right now, and it's the first thing he talks about. And I'm going to talk about it too, because I get asked all the time, is that a mod? How do I get a mod to show all of the yields that you have below the civilization leaders on the top right of the corner? And it is not. Uh, it's not a mod. It's actually built into the game, um, and I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't get, if I didn't get asked about this so much. So to turn this on to see all the different yields that you have uh, that and then the AI have as well, go to uh, the options. So go to the game menu, go to options, click on interface, and there's a section here that says show yields in HUD ribbon. I have mine set to always show. It is by default set to always hide, so it looks like this. But if you have yours set to, you can have it set to always show, you can have it set to show on mouse over, so if, if you hover over it, it shows the yields. I like it to be always show. It does take up like a, a, a little bit of space up here, but I feel like that's a little bit more important to, to look and see what's going on up here than, you know, worrying about this little tiny bit of screen real estate. There you go. It's, it's the first thing I want to talk about. It's not really like a trick in the game. It's just, I don't know, I get asked about it all the time and a lot of people still don't use it. Even when I, I'll just browse Twitch, I'll just browse the Civ section of, of it. And, and the amount of people that I see, probably because they're playing for the first time, but the amount of people that I see with this, just like this here, and then they see them maybe later in my stream and they'll be asking, you know, how do you get that? That's how. So there's, there's the first thing. The next one I'm talking about here is mods, I guess specifically UI mods. I know that there are some people that are purists about the game, um, you know, and they don't really like to play with uh, mods that affect yields and stuff like that. But just install some UI mods. It's it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, UI mods will help out a lot. The ones that I use are uh, detailed map tax, extended policy cards, um, and quick deals. Uh, these two specifically here, detailed map tax and extended policy cards, are... A I mean, they're probably the two best mods in the entire game that everybody should should own. Uh, side note, in order to use extended policy cards, you have to have better report screen um, because otherwise this will not work. And so if, if you see here, uh, you can see exactly what the extended policy cards does. It shows you the yields of what you would be getting from the policy card. So for example, Naval Infrastructure gives you 100% Harbor District adjacency bonuses. It goes ahead and calculates for, calculates it for you. You could go through and add it all up yourself, but I mean, there's no point in doing that, right? It just just wasted time. Uh, it's not like giving you anything you didn't already know. Uh, you could figure out this stuff yourself. So uh, yeah, extended policy cards is really nice. It's really useful at figuring out, you know, if uh, something is gonna be useful to put in. Uh, very useful mod. And then there's also, as you can see here, pins everywhere. The detailed map tax pin. There already is a section here where that's baked into the game called map tax, where you can add a pin on the ground and uh, plan out your empire uh, but what detailed map tax does is it also calculates the adjacency of or the yields that you would get from what you were planning here as you can see here it shows you all the diff all the different yields that you would be getting in the adjacency bonuses just from the map tax which i think this is probably one of the the best mods as i stated before in the entire game and i would uh, highly recommend you getting it because of just because of this i mean the fact that it shows you your adjacencies and you can you can plan your empire based off of that is insanely useful uh, additionally as you can see here i was taking away those pins with the hotkey if you go to the key bindings you can add uh you can bind hotkeys for uh, for detailed map tax and you can also hide them you can hide your your map tax which is really nice Additionally, the, the extra mod that I also would highly recommend running is Quick Deals. It's the same type of thing where you already know 
what people are willing to pay, you know, for Diplo Favor, for example, if you go to here and you go to make a deal, what would you give me? If they show you, you know, what, what what they would be willing to pay for for that. But Quick Deals does it for you automatically by giving you the best possible deal for every single leader here. And so you can, you know, add everything up here and it, it'll give you the best possible deal. You could also go from, if you right click and convert from gold per turn to, to flat gold as well. Uh, very useful. Same thing with purchasing. You know, if you want to purchase Diplo Favor, you could see every single person, how much they're willing to sell Diplo Favor for the amount of gold, you know, great works, strategic resources, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, very useful mod. Another thing here is, uh, I like to call it, I mean, I guess it's just scamming the AI out of Diplo Favor. <laughs> the early Diplo Favor, the AI at some point doesn't favor it at all and they will sell you all of their diplomatic favor for one flat gold you could even do it in here if you don't have quick deals mod um where as you can see here here's all of their diplo favor that th well that they're willing to sell um so it was i believe it was 20 you're correct yeah so 20 they'll buy it or they'll sell it all and you could buy it for them for one gold and uh as as time goes on uh you can continue to uh, and you can keep doing it over and over and over again until you get to the point where, as you can see, now they're starting to, a couple of them are starting to value Diplo Favor a little bit more. They're only willing to sell it for six gold, flat gold. So what you can do now is I have, as you can see, I mean, we have four per turn for, because we got a tier one government. But uh, as you can see, I have accumulated 400 Diplo Favor. Uh, this is probably around 400 and... 60 ish 450 ish diplo favor that i've gotten just from scamming the ai and we can go ahead and start selling it back to them for as much as they're willing to give us and as you can see here i mean cyrus is willing to pay us 348 flat gold plus 44 gold per turn at turn 65 and that's literally all of his available gold uh let's see if we can how was it, it was 348 and 44 348 flat gold plus 44 gold per turn for selling half of, a little over half of our Diplo favor that we accumulated by scamming the AI. And uh, we're at turn uh, 65. So, you know, next turn you'll see this go up to 67.2. That's just, uh, that just shows you how strong scamming the AI is in the early game. And some of them still don't even favor it all the way either. So you can buy it again from a couple of these people. And, uh, oh. I have 213 Diplo favor that I don't want to use yet because we don't have World Congress for a long time. What's that? Chandra Gupta wants to give me 250 gold for it. Okay. So now I have 740 gold at 67 gold per turn at turn 66. And, uh, you know, we could use that uh, for whatever we want. So, you know, we could just buy a settler because why not? Uh, this also kind of ties in with the Diplo favor side of things, but the AI is also willing to pay you for things outside of resources. Uh, they will be some AI who tend to like you will pay you for having open borders. So as you can see here, this doesn't work in quick deals, unfortunately. Um, but if you put the open borders on the table and you ask them for all of their gold and you click make this deal more equitable, they will say, oh, they'll give you 13 gold for uh, open borders with them, which is, I mean, it's free gold. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I don't think he likes me enough to do that. Yeah, so he does not. He wants me to pay. Um, this also applies to other things such as alliances as well. He's willing it as well, as well as peace deals. Sometimes if you are at war with someone and you are crushing them uh, and you click peace, you can also do the same thing where you can uh, click on, you know, make peace and have them pay you for it. And sometimes they'd be, they're willing, if they're, if they're really hurting, they're, they would be willing to give up Diplo favor, sometimes luxury resources, strategic resources, uh, and also other cases, entire cities. So uh, use that to your advantage as well. Uh, this one may seem a little, uh, I mean, obvious for some, but um, this is, uh, I guess, a little kind of advanced for others, too. There are multiple times where you want to place a, um, a wonder or maybe a district on a specific tile, but that tile has a resource, and you also want to chop the tile at the same time, but you can't because if you chop the tile, uh, for example, this one here, we want to place Oracle on this tile. If you place it, well, now you can no longer chop, chop it. Same thing happens if, for example, you wanted to chop out a theater square on that tile and you have a settler here and you wanted to place it there and you go and swap it over. Well, you can't because it just completely chops it here. There is a way you can chop and save the production to be added onto the thing that you want to chop. So what you do if you wanted to chop, uh, say, for example, Oracle on this and you wanted to use the chop to add to the production of 
Oracle in this tile. And you may be wondering, what, what is he talking about chopping if you don't know? If you chop a resource, which you can see here, it's called remove production with the builder. The yields for this are from that this resource provides. So this one yields 27 production and 27 food if you chop it is added to your city's current production and food output. So if we chop here, you'll see Oracle is 10 turns. Give it a chop. Add Oracle. The, the What happens, it may not look like it in here, but uh, there is overflow production that is added. That was 27 extra production here. We are working 24. So on the next turn, this should be down to about 8 turns, maybe 7 instead of the, the, the 9. So as you can see, yeah, 8 turns. There was 27 overflow production that was added from chopping this resource. As you can see here, there is 58 production here now. The, this is at 58 production total that has been worked because we chopped into here. And there's a, an overflow of production that was added on the next turn. And now we're at 58 production instead of what we would have been at before from just working one turn. And another one here. This, this one also may seem... Uh, a little simple for some as I had stated before but I mean th this I'm just going over a lot of the things that I get asked about all the time on stream um, and and that is the lens hotkeys so if you're unaware the lenses are a specific way of viewing the game based off of um, different aspects of the game so you can look at a lens of the religion it gives you the map based off of religion the continents in the map the appeal of the map settler lens where it shows fresh water no water, and uh, whether or not you can settle there. Government lens, political lens, so on and so forth. That This is really useful, but a lot of people ask me, see me going like this and, and hovering around through the lenses so fast and, and constantly using them. They're wondering how I'm doing it. It's really simple. Each of these lenses correspond to the numbers on the keypad. So religion is one, continent is two, appeal is three, four, five, six, as you can see, going all the way down through one through zero. Very simple. That's why in my videos, in my edited videos, you see me moving around like this, going like that really quickly without having to go all the way down here to the left and, and clicking. It is because I am using the uh, settler lens, which is number four on the keyboard to, to search while I'm doing that. And there you go. It's a really, really easy one. And uh, the last one here, uh, th this may seem not really a tip or a trick, but um, just this is just kind of some some information that are some things that I want to want to say is that have fun with a game. Uh, there are a lot of times where I will see um, people just constantly berating other people for not playing the way that they like to play, uh, and that includes whether it be not playing on deity. Um, you know, playing specific curated maps to, to the way that they want to play them. Um, you know, doing silly things like uh, one versus four AI on Settler, you know, it, it, who cares? At the end of the day, you're playing a video game. You're playing a video game to have fun. Um, and if you are not having fun playing the game and, and you are trying to, to play a, a way that people want you to play, uh, then don't. Don't listen to people. I, I think I think I get a lot of comments being saying the lines of uh, you are not playing the exact specific way that the best Civ Six player should be playing, and if you're not playing this way, then you suck. And at this point, I just don't care. Um, I play the game to have fun for myself. I play the game so that other people can find the games humorous or entertaining. Um, and if it happens to be at a high level, which it is, I play on Deity exclusively. Uh, then so be it. But you know, there are a lot of content creators out there who don't play on Deity. Uh, and have the most subs and have the most entertaining content. A great example is Spiffing Brit. You all know him, and he doesn't play on D80 when he does his YouTube videos for Civ, and those videos are fantastic. So, and that's really the last thing I want to say is play to have fun. Play, uh, play the way that you want to play, and if people give you crap for it, then don't listen to them. <laughs> it's you're playing the game. It's Civilization VI. There are a million different ways you can play it, and if playing on Settler versus 2AI is fun for you, then that's fun for you. If playing Red Death is fun for you, then that's fun for you, and and, uh, and you do you. With all of that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a quick little video, uh, mostly ge geared towards people who don't play a lot of Civ, um, but I hope there was something in there that you could have grabbed from that. Uh, if you guys, like I said earlier in the beginning, if you guys don't know who I am or if you're unfamiliar with my content, I stream on twitch.tv slash every Wednesday through Saturday, 12 to 4 p.m. Pacific time where I stream mainly Civilization VI. Sometimes I'll throw in uh, some City Skylines, maybe some Stardew Valley, maybe some Dota 2. 
Um, but uh, I also upload videos twice a week, every Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday, sometimes different days, depending on how I, when I finish them. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if, uh, if you guys want to see some more content like this in the future, please let me know in the comments. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. -bye.